Are you a woman searching for purpose and success? A housewife? Maybe a single mother? You're in the right place. Welcome to Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles. Activate, motivate, inspire. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. I am Miss Lisa Nobles, your hostess, and I am so excited to have you joining with me today. And speaking of today, our topic will consist of don't be basic, be a high value woman. This segment will comprise of my guest and my guest and I discussing the importance of women being women of high standards and value oriented, right? So thereby, let's get started. I have a wonderful guest with me today, Miss Linda Hales. Welcome, Queen, to the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast Roundtable Discussion. I am so elated to have this queen with me here today. Our focus again is don't be basic, be a high value woman. So we're going to take an opportunity to allow Linda to introduce herself and then shortly after, as protocol, we'll move on in the show. So, Linda, welcome, Queen. Why don't you take an opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll push forward. Good morning or good afternoon, right, because you're going to be listening to this whenever you have a chance. Thank you so much, Lisa, for having me on your show. Mm -hmm. I am so excited to share with your audience. I am, I'm, I'm just so humbled that you uh, entrust your audience to me. So, thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank well, you, Linda. Oh, go ahead, sweetheart. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you've already introduced me, my name. You know, I am, um, I guess I am just yet your, your, your girl next door. I'm a mom just mm -hmm. like you. Mm -hmm. I have children just like you. Mm -hmm. I have a life just like you. And then I have passions just like you. I have mm -hmm. dreams just like you. And my mm -hmm. passion and my dreams include helping my sisters mm -hmm. figure out why they are awesome in every area of life, mm -hmm. except their love life. See, I said I was just like you. I have a job. I have kids. I have a house. I yes. have responsibilities. I'm like you, but I'm not like you. Right. Because I <laughs> I have the the sauce. I have the secret weapon. I have that, that thing that women are wondering, Linda, why do I keep running into the wrong man over right. and over again? What is what is that? And so I that's my passion. I love talking awesome. about it. I talk about it in my sleep. Yes. And so I'm here to serve. That's, oh, that's, that's what God's putting me, you know, to, to leave a mark on, on the world, if, if, yes. you know, if we could say it that way. That's how I leave my mark on earth, by helping men and be awesome. That is so phenomenal, Linda, and I am so elated. We have had several conversations, so I cannot wait for the audience to hear your information and what you want to share, and not only that, to hear your passion. So please pay attention to the passion in her voice. Every time I have spoken with Linda, I've noticed her authenticity in, in sharing how to equip women with the, the tools the necessary tools to date efficiently and proficiently and then empowered while in doing so. So, you know, being a strong and empowered woman, Linda will introduce concepts which will reveal how to become an irresistible family, irresistible woman of value. Women that attract the right kind of men, because I know some of us, if you anything like me, are kind of daunting in that area of attracting the right kind of men. And I know that that's aligned with being the right type of woman, right? And as Linda has already alluded to, we got to find our awesome. So the best relationship and while maintaining Doing all of that, but while maintaining your self-dignity, your self-respect, as well as your self-integrity. So are you ready, family? Then let's talk about it. Again, our topic is Don't Be Basic, which is Linda's company, her coaching method. So, of course, that's why we are having it at the forefront. Be a high-value woman. So let's get right in and address this tough topic. And I'm, I'm elated, Linda. So, Linda, when we spoke about, about your business, you talked about your passion for teaching and indoctrinating women and men about relational coaching concepts of not being basic. What does that termino terminology actually mean, don't be basic, Linda? 
<laughs> well, you know, it's um, it's the music, it's the music um kind of phrase. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you listen to any type of uh you know new music R and B or even hip hop, you're going to or you are into pop culture or you read celebrity you know magazines, you will inevitably run into the place that we can pick. And and so I love it because a lot of people understand it. They know. They know what it means. And so basic women get basic results in dating and in love. And so you you and I, you know, when we get a little older, like when we get past 40, 45, we may replace basic with the word average or typical. So don't be average. Don't be typical. Don't be basic. If you, if you ask a basic woman what what makes her awesome or what makes her special or what makes her different, um, she'll start letting off, you know, her her degree or compare herself against other women. And she'll tell you how much better she is than every other woman. She'll tell you that she's awesome because she's not like every other woman, but that's the same thing that every other woman says. Right. And so I believe if, if, if you're so awesome that you can Google your relationship problem and you find 10,000 Google hits on that problem. You can, you can find 18 blogs about that problem. You can find groups of women in different states with your same problem, then you're not so awesome. Right. If, if thousands of women across the country can relate yes. to the kind of men problem that you have, you're, you're basic. Yes. I understand. So that's what that means. I love that, Linda. I love that, especially when you were, when you broke it down and you said being basic is when women, we do, in essence, some of us, we're looking for that basic result or we're being typical. And we have to redefine what that basic is in actuality. Or we need to step away from being that type of, or maintaining that type of basic characteristic that will keep us in a basic relationship. Because if we're going to be awesome as what you advocate, there are some things in our lives that have to change. So I love that don't be basic family. Why do you think this subject, Linda, is a passion for you? Because so many educated women who have their own car, their own place, they have raised awesome kids, they can cook, she's faithful, they don't sleep around, you know, they're just, they're just a good, they're both a good woman. Yes. They, yeah, they've been single for years. They only get with married men. Yes. They only find unemployed men. They get cheated on in every relationship. It could be like the past four relationships I have. Every single man cheats on me. All men are liars. All men are dogs. Or they get with abusive men. But the number one thing that they all do, whether they all meet, you know, all the criteria I just mentioned, the number one thing they all do is they're laying up at night, insecure, in their bed, praying prayers like, God, but I'm so, I'm such a good woman. Why? Why can't I find a good man? Right. Or if they have a man, they're not, they can't even sleep right because they're wondering what he's doing. Yes. Where is he at? Is he cheating on me? Is this one cheating on me too? Right. Because they already know all the signs from all the men that they've been with in the past. And inevitably, they see the signs in this new man. Because you are responsible for the men that you choose. These men don't happen to you. These relationships don't seek you out and, and, and make you a victim. You have 100% responsibility. So that's why it's a passion for me. Because women do not know the behaviors that they do that land them with the same types of relationships over and over again. I love that. And you know something, Linda, we kind of spoke, you spoke about that briefly in our offline conversation. But even if you wanted to expound, I think this is so integral. We talk about behaviors. Some of us are so wrapped in a certain type of behavior. And what you just, what you just said was very key is that we are responsible for the men that we choose. Our women, if we're a man, if we want a woman, whatever it is. But specifically, we are responsible for the men that we choose. Can you expound upon that concept about those behaviors and how that connects 
to why we choose those those same type of men that are the cheaters, that are the liars, that are, are the men that that treat us that particular way that is unhealthy, but yet we feel most comfortable in those type of relationships. What are your thoughts on okay. that? Okay. Mm -hmm. I will give you maybe one example or two. Recently, I was talking to a young lady, mm -hmm. and she was telling me about her quote-unquote boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And when she spoke about this man, her eyes lit up, and she was excited just like, Every woman gets when she talks about her man. Yes. And then I said, well, how long have you guys been together? And she literally looked at me and said, Linda, really? <clears throat> He's my boyfriend in my head. You know, like, I know he really likes me and he knows that I really like him. But we really haven't had, like, a conversation to, like, make it official. So he, he, he's like my boyfriend in my head. And now this is a woman over 30. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, like, even though I've heard this many times before from many women who are older than 35 and 40, it blows my mind that women have relationships in their head. Yes. I call these situationships. They're not relationships. You got a situation. I love it. You know, and, and your situation might include because you've been adding technology to it. So you FaceTime with this guy. This guy texts you first thing in the morning. And he makes you feel that every woman loves to wake up and see a good morning, beautiful. Yes. Hey, pretty girl. Yes. You know, whatever. Like, so these things that he's doing, they are eliciting emotions. These emotions of yours, they feel good. Oh, he likes me. Oh, my God, he's reaching out to me. And these emotions start to lie to you. You start to think, this is my man. He is doing things to, because he wants me to fall in love with him. And you begin to have a Taxationship with this man. Yes. He's in another state. You guys met over Facebook or on a dating site. He ain't making no plans to come meet you. But for the past three months, you guys text first thing in the morning. You FaceTime when you go to lunch. And you come home and you give him two hours of the evening. And it's been three months and you haven't even met the guy. Yes. But this is quote unquote, you, you in a relationship. No, you are not. You are in a textationship. That's what you're doing, texting this man. Yes. And you're lying to yourself. So women lie to themselves. Their emotions take over, and those emotions that they're feeling, they are very real. They're not fake. You are feeling the butterflies in your stomach. You are feeling elated. You are feeling all that. But the other part, which is the behavior that he should be doing after he says all that stuff, it ain't happening. So yeah. you just falling in love with what he's saying, but you're not really watching what he's doing. Yes. So, that's one of the biggest things that every single woman of every of every age bracket has, is that they fall in love with what they hear. Right. And even when he starts doing opposite of what he's saying, what he's saying is so strong that it, that it overrides you know, just clearly what he's not doing. That is what I would say. So what he is doing, it doesn't matter. Because what he's saying sounds so good. And so, I mean, that is to me the number one thing that women do that, that keeps them in bad relationships. They blind themselves to the behaviors they need to look out for. Yes. And, and so once they start hearing this stuff and they let their emotions take over, she starts to do amazing behaviors to him. She starts to treat him often. And yes. she's so busy treating him often, she can't see that. He's not even trying to treat her off. And he's not even proving to her that he's the best. But she's busy proving to him, look at me, I'm good. Look at me, pick me. Look at me, I, I, I'm faithful. Look at me, I can cook. Look at me, I bring you food to your dad. Yes. Girl, please sit down. Please sit down. Yes. Let, let him bring you food to your dad. Let him show you that he's up. Let him put gas in your car when it's empty. Let him look at your tire and say, ooh, girl, your tires are bald. Go over here to my boy Tommy and tell him that you're my lady. And uh, I'll be over there after this, so and we'll, we'll figure out something about your type. Yes. You're not letting him do that. You're not letting him do that. Because that's what an awesome man does for you. Right. I love he it. He wants to look out for you to yes. the best of his ability. But we're not, we're not letting them do that. We too busy trying to show him, pick me, pick me. I'm awesome. I love that, Linda. I think what you're saying, you're getting to the heart and the meat of relationships, which a lot of what you've just discussed we don't talk about in 
in society. We don't get into the meats and bolts and notes and bolts of relationships. We kind of overlook this discussion because sometimes we're afraid. So my next question to you, Linda, is do you think we as women lack the self-esteem in which we settle in relationships, then we become too convenient for men? I think that the better phrase would be um, no self-worth. Because I think self-esteem, a lot of us are not lacking in the self-esteem area. You know, like I mentioned at the beginning, we make our own money. We have our job. We have our career. We, we're involved in ministry. We have an amazing job. You know, we, we like and we love our life. We, we're not lacking the self-esteem per se. But because we have this very basic need, and, and, and when I'm saying basic now, I, I, I don't mean it in a negative way. Mm-hmm. Every no, human no. being, from the moment, you know, from the moment we are born, we have this need to belong, to be yes. wanted. And mm-hmm. we need to make sure that our needs are being satisfied. You know, from the, from the moments we're babies and we cry mm-hmm. and our mom comes to feed us, you know, to, to, to the crib and, 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 and hold us and, and reassure us. So we want to feel desired and attractive. And, you know, some of us, it's been such a long time since we, since we felt wanted, since we felt attractive, since a man told us, I love your lipstick. You know, I love that perfume. Yes. And it's been so long since we heard that, that we, oh, he's the one. We immediately want to make this man the one. We oh, are awesome. awesome as women at doing that. So I think that's what it is. We, we just want to be wanted and desired. And... And we're afraid of what people are going to say about us. Like, I don't want to be dating four or five men because I don't want people to say that, you know, I'm loose or that I'm, you know, that I'm easy. So I'm going to grab onto this one right here. He's going to be the one because he's going he's gonna to see how awesome I am. That's really what it is. It's our self worth. We don't think that there's something better out there. This one is the one. He must be the one that got set. Right. Oh. I, I love that, Linda. I love that because for a couple of reasons, when we talk about uh, address our fears as women, I wish we had even more roundtable discussions with just women where we are talking real talk. And we're really talking about discovering our fears and how to overcome them, which what you're saying really would address the core issues that a lot of us would have or have had in our lifetime, especially when I love the part where you, the point you brought up is that we don't want to be dating four or five men because it seems so cliche for we as women. So sometimes that encourages us to unconsciously settle. Okay, this has to be the one. So we settle for sometimes what we don't even really want but because it's convenient is what I'm hearing you say we are settled and because it is it's fulfilling our basic needs we don't have to feel lonely we don't have to feel vulnerable we can feel we can feel we can feel that void by having by saying I got a man Linda, that, that's what's wrong and a lot of us are uh-huh. getting hurt because we want to say I got a man but what about exactly. finding, yes, finding that self-esteem, that self-worth is saying it's okay to be me and be me by myself while I am getting hold in my singleness. So which brings me to my next point in your coaching method, you speak about giving wifey privileges before it's time. Thereby, when we do this, we end up in bad relationships. Chips left feeling used and emo- un- emotionally abused, in some cases, physically abused. You are a secret, secret weapon for your clients, Linda. What does that mean for women or men who need this type of relational advice? <laughs> okay, so this is how I, I explain it. You know, pirates, yes. they, they have treasure maps. And so, they set out to find the treasure because it's right where the big red X is on the map. So they don't don't get lost. They just follow the map to the treasure, right? And so in today's world, you can drive to places that you've never driven before and you won't get lost because you have a GPS, whether it's on your car or on your phone. There's a machine telling you, turn around. You pass the exit. Turn around. Right? So that's what I am for my clients. I am my client's GPS. I'm, I'm right. the treasure map. 
And so when my clients work with me, this, this gives them an unfair advantage over other women. Right. This is why I'm their secret weapon because they understand behaviors. And, and the majority of us, we're just full of scripture. We're full of advice, most of it bad or misunderstood advice that was meant for good, but, you know, you're yeah. applying it the wrong way. And so once you know something, you can't unhear what I'm telling you. Even if you hang up the phone or you leave one of our sessions and you still want to go down the wrong way, you can't say that Linda didn't tell you that there was a big pothole down that road and you should have taken a detour. Right. Because when you fall in the pothole, you're going to be like, shh, Linda told me about the pothole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I want to do it anyway. But Linda did tell me about this pothole, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so Queen, <laughs> Queen, thank you. I want everyone to stay right there. We're gonna take a real quick break and Linda I, Linda and I will be right back. I love this topic. We're in the meat of it. I know you're enjoying it. I want you to stay right there. Savvy Speaks will be right back after this quick break. The Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles. We'll be right back. Back to the show, the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles. Hello, 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 and we're back, family, and you're listening to the Savage Speaks Empowerment Podcast, specifically, oh my goodness, I'm so elated to get back, this empowering topic is don't be basic, and I know you hear some little chattering in the background, but it's okay, that is some some really some getting you ready chatter in the background don't be basic be a high value woman where well, i have linda hells here founder of don't be basic she is a relationship coach in teaching individuals how to be women of high value so family is this okay with you let's continue the discussion linda i know you're over there on your keyboard we're back. We're recording. Let's get started. Linda, we're back. And I want to continue this discussion because I want to make sure that people, the audience is really focused on what you're saying. And um, so we're back. And I- A woman of caliber is a high value woman. Mm-hmm. And a high value woman has boundaries. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to explain a little parentheses, a little sidebar in there. A lot of women think if I have boundaries and I and those are my rules, quote, unquote, those are my rules, and I start to tell people what my rules are, then they think I am, you know, um, I'm bougie or I'm stuck up or I'm how many, right? And so for whatever reason, women, women don't want to come across to a man as bougie, uh, stuck up, or how many is specific. Mm-hmm. And, but a high value woman has boundaries, which I don't have a problem calling it high maintenance, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Those boundaries, she enforces in such a way, in, in such a feminine way, that a man only has two choices when dealing with her. He's either going to succumb to her and be like, oh my God, this is the woman for me, or he's going to leave her alone because he can't mess with that. Mm-hmm. He, she's got boundaries, and he's not willing to you know, to, to step up to that to, to that line that, that she's setting for. Right. And so um, I, I, I read a, a blog post years ago. I wish I could remember the man who wrote it because it was when I was first, I was still in college and I was trying to figure out my way what kind of coaching I was going to give to women. And this blog post, this man spoke about why men love high-maintenance women. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting because just the title alone makes you want to read it. You're like, what? Men love right. women. Mm-hmm. Well, this man said, he was a relationship coach, and he said that men value what they put their money into. You mm-hmm. can see it by their cars. You can see it by their shoes. Mm-hmm. You can see it by their office. Men value and treat better and protect that thing that they spend their actual money on. 
Mm-hmm. And a man who, you know, has a job that wants to work for a living, um, he values his time because he knows if I'm not sitting at my desk, if I'm not at work, I'm not making money. So when a man gives you his time, it is his money. And so when a man starts to invest his time in you, and eventually decides this is the woman I want to date, and truly starts to invest his money in you, that gifts, Valentine's, Christmas, Mother's Day, whatever, men value that woman that they spend their money on. Mm-hmm. That is a high value woman. They like to go to work and brag and say, I bought my baby this car. Mm-hmm. I bought my baby this piece of jewelry. Mm-hmm. They love to go to work and brag with their coworkers or their peers. Hey, this is what I did for my lady. She's looking at a house in such and such neighborhood. We live in a good qualified for this. That there's nothing wrong with quote unquote being high maintenance, with, with having those standards. And if he doesn't step to them, then you didn't waste any time. Right. You didn't have to sleep with him. But a lot of us put that, what is it, put the carriage before the horse, and mm-hmm. we start doing all these things, and then we're trying to backpedal when it doesn't work, or he's not doing quote unquote what we want, and then all of a sudden we have, we have standards. Right. And I, I, we should have had them at the beginning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I a high-value woman is not scared. I'm sorry. A high-value woman is not scared to speak about her standards out the gate. I love that. I, I love that. And, and But do you agree that even being a high-value woman who's not who's kind of fearless, that still goes back and ties into having a certain amount of self-esteem or self-worth? So I think one of the real issues is making sure that we feel worthy or that we feel that we are capable of being this type of woman. It's about how we see ourselves, especially being a um, co-behavior analysis with you. I I would, I would almost advocate, you know, it's our self, our self-concept. How do you see yourself? In order to see yourself as a high caliber woman, you have to know you got to have that self-confidence, that self-love, right? So if I want to be a woman of caliber or a woman of value, I want to talk a little bit about appearances, appearances, because I believe that all of this, they, it co- all these concepts coexist together. So a woman's appearance, which we spoke about offline, which is something you're very passionate about, Linda, and your method, what are your top reasoning for women being on point always, looking the part? being the part as well as dressing the part, even when you are not in a relationship. Can you speak a little bit to the audience about that, Linda? Yes. So I I, I preach behaviors, behaviors, right. behaviors. Your appearance, your standard for the way you look and you show up to the world mm-hmm. should be your standard for yourself. Yes. You're not doing this to attract a man. You're not doing this. You do this because you respect and you value yourself and you care about the way you show up in life. Yes. Before I continue to explain it, I'm going to tell you that there was a a time in my life where I joined a multi-level marketing company, which um, when you advance Mm -hmm. through the rank, there were specific clothing, there were specific suits that you had to order from the company right. to signify that you are in this leadership position. Exactly. And when you when you moved up higher then you added like a lapel or a different yeah. cuff. You know, you just you just added on to the suit. But the suit was never a pant suit. The suit was a skirt suit. Yes. And the company was adamant about you wearing skirt. And there was research and if you get off this podcast and you want to Google you want to research why women who wear dresses or skirts get promoted more often. Yes. Why do women who wear makeup get promoted more often on the job? Why do people take you more seriously when your hair is in place? Yes. And, and so there is research. This is not because Linda wants you to be, and uh, she wants me to go and spend all my money on clothes and, and be someone right, I'm not. Right. If you're listening to this podcast and you're, and you're saying that, this podcast is not for you. Yes. yes. Like, if you're listening to this podcast, you're saying, I don't care how I look at you to the world. I don't got to dress up no kind of way. I don't, well, then this is not the podcast for you, honey. Yes. Thank you for listening. Refer to someone else. Yes. Right? So I, I don't understand why many women just don't have a standard 
for their appearance. Listen to the word. It's a standard. Because I believe that how you do one thing yes. is how you do everything. I love and so we need to have a standard of excellence I for ourselves it. in our life. And it goes like this. Number one is our appearance. Personal appearance. Plus the straight eyebrows. You got lip hair, do whatever you're going to do with it. Shave, wax, dye your hair. If you have been dyeing your hair and it's been more than three months and you have three months worth of growth, whether it's dyeing your hair, relaxing it, whatever, please take care of those roots. Yes. Because that just looks unkept. I mean, you look unkept. You know, smell good. You know, my biggest pet peeve in a woman's appearance is a woman who walks around with heels that need heel taps. Yes. Mm -hmm. Making that loud click, clack, click, clack yes. sound. Mm -hmm. That's not feminine. That's not high value. That's just like, do you have money for shoes, honey? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and with payless shoes, with, with BSW, with all of these shoe warehouses, I don't see an excuse for women not to have shoes on their feet mm -hmm. that are affordable mm -hmm. and pretty. But our appearance goes deeper, Lisa. Our yes. car. Yes. Take your car through the car wash. Yes. Vacuum it. I love this. Change, let me tell you, change your clock to yes. the daylight saving time on the day that the daylight changes, daylight saving time changes. It's called you tolerating stuff. Our house. Sweep your kitchen floor. Yes. Mop it. If you have pets in your home or you've got a bird cage, clean up the bird cage. Bathe your pets so that your home doesn't smell like pets. Don't go to sleep with the dishes in your sink. Mm -hmm. Clean out the cobwebs. Be simple. These are wet. Tolerate. We're tolerating this. Every time mm -hmm. you walk past that mm -hmm. cobweb and you don't get it with the broom, it's so easy to just put your broom there. Boop, one sweep. That's it. Yes. But you don't do it. Yes. It's so easy to change the clock in your car, but you don't do it. And when you tolerate these things, when you tolerate in areas of your life, you tolerate men. You yes. tolerate other things. Right. And so, girl, the appearance, as you can tell how my voice just changed, it yes. is a big one for me. Yes. Because it's not just how you look physically. It's that you don't have a standard for appearances, and therefore you tolerate. And if you tolerate in that basic area of your life, you don't tolerate anywhere else. I love that. You are spot on, which, you know, I really wanted you to expound upon. Do we lose value when we lower our standards? And I think you really kind of touched upon that because we don't think about the little things, Linda. We don't think about, like you said, cleaning out the cobwebs or just the basic necessities of life that will make you feel empowered. I mean, even though maybe all of that doesn't apply to me per se, but yet I felt empowered as you spoke because I got to thinking, yeah, you know, if I did have a man, I would want, he might look at those things. And then it also brought up another concept of, well, then if he's tolerating that for a long time, is that why he cheat? You know what I mean? Like if he's just unhappy in just those simple things, is that why another reason it gives to equip men to want to go and cheat? You know what I'm saying? But another thing is because you're so real when you talk. So do you think that it's important that we be real in our relationships, that we have that real conversations in our relationships, Linda? Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. inevitably, even if you don't have the conversation, the situation is going to come up. Are so you either going to have the conversation or you're going to be in denial. And, and let me tell you about a real conversation that a client of mine needed to have with, with her partner. Mm -hmm. um, they had been dating for a long time, and he, was, he really kept talking about marriage, and, and she, was, she was for it. This man was chronically ill. And so having this chronic illness, he didn't qualify for life insurance at this point. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it is important to think, okay, you're signing up for this. Are you going to inherit hospital bills? Because this chronic illness is going to end up putting him in a wheelchair. Right. right? So, are you prepared to be a caregiver? Yes. Now you're just taking yourself from nurturing, loving life to a caregiver. This man will not be able to live without someone doing everything for him in several years. 
Right. And I know he, you know, this man will not be able to perform sexually in a couple of years. Right. You know, these are real conversations you need to have. Right. Okay, so I'm going to marry you. We don't have life insurance. What's going to happen when you die? Do you have a 401k? How are you going to end up taking care of it? These, you know, this is not being a ghost because this is you positioning yourself to win in life. Right. I love that. Because he's getting something that he needs. He's in love with you. He's treating you awesomely. He, he is investing in you because he, he's letting you know, babe, I'm going to be in a wheelchair in several years because my illness is going to continue to progress. And I love you. And because I love you, I want to marry you. But when I, when I die, here's how you're going to be taken care of mm-hmm. for having been there for me in this way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. But they, she needed to start that conversation because that's a very difficult conversation to have. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, like and somebody yeah. might be like, well, I don't want to look like a gold digger. You're not looking like a gold digger when you're asking for a man to clarify to you, how do you protect and provide for me even after you're gone? Right. But that's because something I'm a mom. Talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I, as a mom, as a responsible human being, a citizen of earth, I tell my children, hey, if something happens to me right now, I will still be doing the right thing from the grave. I got life insurance. Yes. So oh, mom will continue mm-hmm. to do the right thing even from the grave. Yes. And so if, if as a woman, I have this standard for myself, I know this brother better have it when he step on the scene for me because if he, if he don't have it, then he's not my man. People be like, well, Linda, what if your man did blah, 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 blah. I'm like, if my man did that, she wouldn't be my man. So I, I, I don't have an answer to it. Right. I, I, I love that. You know, I don't have an answer for you. I love that she's always so authentic. So how do, it's another part, this is going to lead me to my, my, my next question. There's another part of mm. your coaching method which talks about repelling love. And I thought that that was so interesting. So how, what are your top behaviors that one can identify which possibly aid in them repelling love versus versus being open to it. How does one repel love? Well, women, women have this, um, we're kind of very one, one-sided when we think. We think that love is the same as romance, affection, and whatever else. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, many of my clients will say, well, Linda, I don't, I don't sleep with men unless, mm-hmm. you know, um, He's my man. Like, I'm, right. if I'm speaking to him, I'm not speaking to anyone else. You know, I, I don't sleep with random men. And, you know, they're, they're very justified. Like, I don't sleep well. Okay, but does he know this? Right. Does he know that he's your man? <laughs> She's a <laughs> or, or are you just saying, you started sleeping with him, so you said to yourself, well, I'm not speaking to anybody else. He should know that I'm faithful to him and he's the only one. And right. this makes us have a relationship. So we would tell love because love. And commitment, really what we're looking for is a man who will commit to us. But yes. they don't. We repel it by acting like a wife to a man that does not deserve it or did not earn it. Okay? I love that. I love that, so, Linda. Now, so we say the word love very loosely, but what we really want is commitment. We want his commitment because that's really love for us. He's committed. He's going to put a ring on it. Right. right? He put a ring on it. Um, when, when I need a picture put up, this brother put the picture up. When, right. when my car says that the, that the service is coming up, he's reminding me that he put the car to service, or he took the car to service from me. He is acting like my man in yes. every way, shape, or form. Yes. Like, that's what we want. That's love. That's commitment. Yes. yes. I so love we repel it by just being basic. Yes. I love that. Okay. So, so, Linda, let me let me give you about one minute. I need one minute of what would be your final words to that man or woman who needed to hear this subject? What would you say to that person in about, can you sum that up in 30 seconds to a minute of what would be your final words of a woman or to a man even of not being basic? I think the, the one sentence would be, especially for men, who mm-hmm. have been married for a long time and they even widow or they get divorced after many years, something happens, and they're not used to the dating game. Everyone's like, yes. oh, I've been married all my life. I don't even know how to date. Stop treating people. Stop treating that girl you just met like she was your wife. I know you're a good yes. man. You were married for 20 years, but she's not your wife. Stop buying her a $3,000 purse. You just met her. Yes. Like, 
stop wanting to buy her shoes two months after you met her. That's a really intimate gift. That's right. something you buy your lady, like your lady. Right. You know, and so when men do that, they all get the decision themselves to lose because they get taken for granted. Yes. Yes. I and love a woman that. said, you know, and he's saying, look, I'm a good man. I'm going to provide for you. Boy, stop providing for everybody. Yes. You know? <laughs> or even and the woman. woman yes. Yeah, even the woman and, quit providing. Even a woman, too. I have, I, if you're my good, good friend, if you know me in real life, mm. I make a salmon. When I bake salmon, when I make my salmon in that oven and I season it the way Linda seasons it, everybody on earth wants to eat my salmon. So yes. my best friend, I remember once I, I invited a guy over and, uh, and I was telling her, hey, you know, so and so coming over and I'm, girl, I made my salmon. She was like, what? You made the salmon? Oh, this is yes. serious. Yes. <laughs> and so I was like, you know this? Because, you know, I didn't cook for mm-hmm. that. Right. I so, love that. So we, we do these things. We cook. We, we take, you know, we pick up his children every other Saturday when it's his town. We don't got to do that. I get it, Linda. I love that. I am so elated to have participated in this show today. Linda, you have shared, uh, shared a wealth of knowledge. I know that someone was touched by this wealth. It is so amazing. We should have had a number two. This is so awesome. So thank you so much to the Savage Beast <laughs> Podcast guest, the other queen of the round table, Miss Linda Hills. As a reminder, stay tuned for the Savage Beast Empowerment Podcast next exciting episode where you can find out more at www.iamlisanobles.com slash podcast dot html also you can go to www.iamlisanobles.com slash resources dot html and download free monthly resources that you can use in conjunction with some of our podcast topics why not get you some freebies right and remember This is some great information. Please like and share. Review me on iTunes. I'm always searching for a number five. And we're going to be able to find out more about Linda on my website. I love you for being here, here. And remember, as I always say, as I always say, you are a unique combination of experiences. Clothed in purpose, strength, and destiny. I love you for being here today. Thank you for listening to the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Miss Lisa Nobles. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles. Online at IamLisaNobles.com and on Facebook and Instagram at EWOFP. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review. And we'll catch you next time on Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. Activate. Motivate. Inspire.